against the Rohingya, and they have been raising international concern. So the UN's human rights envoy is visiting areas where the army is accused of the atrocities against the minority group. But the president's spokesman is dismissing the allegations as fake news. Here's Florence Louis. She reports from Sitwe. If there's a place that lays out in stark terms the discrimination faced by the Rohingya community, it's in a small part of Sitwe town. Aung Mingala was one of the first stops in Rakhine State for the UN Human Rights Envoy to Myanmar. I can't comment on it now because it's all on, on my reports and the previous reports. But after this uh, visit, I will be uh, presenting to the Human Rights Council in March, and by then I will come up with another report. The government doesn't recognize the Rohingya as an ethnic group. They're regarded as illegal immigrants from Bangladesh, though many have lived here for generations. The Muslim minority here live segregated from the rest of the mainly Buddhist population, since intercommunal riots displaced more than 100,000 people in 2012. For Nujan Begum, who has heart disease, access to medical care is limited to visits by volunteer doctors. I feel like I can't breathe properly, like my heart is going to stop. Since my children can't work and support me anymore, I'm praying to God to take me, for death to come. The Rohingya can only come and go with permission from the police and are accompanied by armed guards each time. People here aren't free to speak what's truly on their minds. We've had a plainclothes policeman tail us throughout our visit to Ong Mingala quarter. Many people are simply too frightened to talk to us. Reports of atrocities against the Rohingya emerged after soldiers launched a crackdown in response to attacks on border posts in October. The UN says 65,000 people have crossed the border into Bangladesh to escape the violence. Survivors tell of murder, rape and torture by security forces, with the Malaysian Prime Minister alleging genocide in Myanmar. The Myanmar government spokesman told Al Jazeera over the phone that most of the allegations from the international community are false, and now it's clearer and easier to identify fake news. The Rohingya have suffered discrimination and persecution for decades. Lee's visit is highlighting their plight once more. Florence Louis, Al Jazeera, Sitwe, Myanmar. And concerns about fake news with regards to Myanmar is really widespread. Leo, what are you finding? Yes, Doreen, especially when it comes to the Rohingya issue, activists are trying to shed light on what's been happening, but are often targeted themselves and accused of spreading fake news. Ne San Luen is an activist based in Europe and is Rohingya himself. He runs a, so a site called rohingyablogger.com. Com. He asks us not to share his exact location for his safety. He too has been targeted and blamed for spreading fake news. We rely on sources like Nason to bring us information from the ground, though we cannot independently verify these accounts. Reports like this often match those of human rights organizations like this one from the Human Rights Watch from November, showing the destruction of Rohingya villages, a story he also covered on his blog. He sent us this video describing how his work is often targeted and what he does about it. In the last week of December 2016, I have posted a raw story on my Facebook that a Rohingya child die after having vaccination. The government picked up that story and made official announcement through the state media and television that I am spreading the fake news. But later, I verify everything with the villager and uh, I have posted my response on Rohingya Blogger website in English and Burmese language. And uh, I have wrote there, I have written there that how the parents of the child were threatened and forced to sign a bond and they were also one not to tell anyone that uh, their child was died because of the vaccination. Even Myanmar government is defaming me by name. I will never give up and I will keep continue my reporting through my social media and our Rohingya blogger website and I will keep cooperating with the international media outlet. You can always connect with us about this story and any others with the hashtag AJNewsGrid.